used to do was adopt them into the tribe to replace the warriors that were killed. So I think uh, Captain Pike, who was the leader of the Delawares, knew this. The Delawares custom is they burnt their victims. Well, Pike had it in his mind because of the Marina massacre and because he hated the, the, the Americans that Crawford's fate was sealed in his mind. But he had a problem. He had to go to the Wyandotte chief because they were the grandfather tribe of this area and get permission. So in a roundabout way, in a little sly way, he got permission from the Wyandotte chief to take Crawford and do whatever he wanted to. So Crawford's fate was sealed at that time. Uh, Crawford thought that maybe he could be saved with Simon Gurney, who everybody says is, was the nasty, nasty guy. Uh, Simon Gurney was one of three guys that came here from Fort Pitt. They were actually part of the American troops at that time. And, and uh, according to the books I've read, they uh, lost their chance to, to be officers in the American Army. They got disenchanted. And uh, Alexander McKee and uh, Matthew Elliott, uh, people back then, uh, if you were, if you had property and somebody wanted your property, you could say, hey, this guy's a, this guy's a Tory, he's, he's for the British. And that's kind of what happened back in Pennsylvania. So they escaped, they found out that uh, uh, Matthew Elliott was going to be arrested. So all three of them escaped. And of course, Simon Gurney had been raised by Indians, so he felt comfortable coming back. Uh, Matthew Elliott, uh, when he came back, uh, he got a uh, uh, captain's uh, commission in the British Army. And uh, Alexander McKee, he had a training post that he, he worked for. It. So when they came back to this area, uh, away from the American side, the British picked up on that, and there's three guys that they could use to incite the tribes, which Simon really could. Well, when Crawford saw Gertie, they knew each other. He asked him if you know, he could do anything to help him out. And uh, according to the books that you read, Gertie said, you know, I'll try. And then you have other books that says he didn't even try. Uh, but Gertie went to Captain Pike and asked if he could buy Crawford. And he offered him $1,000 or $1,000 in trade. And Pike said no. And they said, Gertie asked him two or three times, and finally, Pipe said, uh, if you ask me one more time, you're going to join him. So Gertie kind of shut up. That's what the book's saying. That's what, what some of the history says. And during the, you know, before the torture happened, uh, Knight and uh, Crawford were with this other group of, of uh, militia. And uh, while they were coming back on the, before they got to the village, uh, the four militia that were with them were jumped on by squalls and, and uh, Indian boys, and they were scalped. Uh, one of them was uh, John McKinley. Now, it is said that he was decapitated, and they kicked his head around the village. And uh, then they put his head on a pole outside the village. Uh, one of the guys that was captured, John Slover, was a scout. Now, he was supposed to be taken back to the Shawnee village because he was actually a Shawnee captive that escaped. And they really wanted him back in the worst way. Uh, Dr. Knight was supposed to be taken back to the Shawnee village. And the same thing was supposed to be done to him that was done to Crawford. The only reason that we have an account of Crawford's torture today is because John Knight sat there and watched it up until the time that Crawford got up the last time and walked around. The torture is horrendous. Uh, you know, they, they uh, so they tied him to a pole, and I have a rendition here. And uh, they give him just enough room to walk around the pole, but in the time of the torture, uh, a lot of the coals littered the area, so Crawford's feet were black from being burned. Um, one other thing they did was they said they fired no less than 70 shots of black powder into his body from his ankles clear up to his neck. And if you can imagine getting black powder shot into your skin, just under the skin, how hard that would be, how, how it would hurt. Plus, they would take what they called the uh, faggot sticks that had the glowing embers on the end of the sticks, and they would touch him with it. Well, that powder would then burn. And so he went through that, and he went through his torture about two hours. 
and he fell down and they scalped him and while he was laying there they said the old squall and it, when you read the book it says the old squall looked like a like a warrior because she was so ugly uh, she went up and grabbed a board full of coals and threw them on where he'd just been scalped and knight said that he Crawford got back up and he started walking again well at that moment knight said he didn't think crawford knew could suffer any pain he thinks he was in so much shock that he just kept walking around well that's when they got up and they they uh, made knight get up and told him this is what's going to happen to you a while the time ago so they took knight and they took him out and they kept him for the night the next morning they walked by where crawford had been tortured knight said all he saw was bones a pile of bones so the you know the torture it was supposed to be in retaliation for the Moravian Massacre. Now, Williamson, who took over command of the troops, uh, he, he got the troops back. They had a battle of Olentangy, the second battle that was associated with this battle. Uh, and I don't know if Jim Cronus is here today. He was supposed to talk about the battle of Olentangy. And uh, if not, if, he, if he's not, uh, I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, anyhow, after it was all over, uh, the war cry for the Americans were, were what happened to Crawford. And I know I'm going kind of fast, but it, we've got other things going on. So uh, that's why this area is so important to uh, the history of Ohio, the history of the United States, because you know the land, they had to get through here on the land, a lot of treaties. A lot of treaties, but a lot of treaties were broken too by the Americans. And the Indians just, you know, they didn't like the Americans. Not up until the Battle of uh, Fallen Timbers, when they sent uh, 12 chiefs from the Wyoming <coughs> tribe to fight against Matt Anthony Wayne, and only one came back, and he was wounded severely. That's Crane, Tari, the, what they called Chief Tari the Crane. And uh, at that moment, he's, that's when he decided to fight for the Americans which they did in the, the War of 1812, and they had the uh, old mission and uh, the Indian Mill. They got money to build the old mission, and the Methodists got that money to build the old mission for the Indians because they wanted a mission. And the Indian Mill, they wanted a mill, and that's, that was built by the American government for the Indians for their participation in the War of 1812. I'm going to end it here because I know that's quick. I had to get through it. I could tell you a lot more details, but if anybody's got any questions, uh, you can ask me. Uh, I can take a couple right now, but uh, if you've got any questions after that, just ask me and I'll try to answer them. I don't know everything. I just know what I've read. You said it was after the Battle of Fallen Timbers that uh, Chief Tarby went over to the American side. He decided that it was a, a hopeless case, that the best thing he could do was uh, to protect the tribe was to, fight, you know, to be on the American side because he knew, he knew it was going to happen. And actually, they did kind of get the shaft in the end anyhow because they got transferred to a reservation. But they did have a few wind come back here, and the settlers around here loved the wind -outs. They said, you know, when they left, a lot of them were crying <coughs> because they were good neighbors. One of them that came back was uh, Margaret Greyhounds, which they called her mother's Solomon. Now, uh, one little thing, I've got books over there. I've got a letter that was signed by Williamson. It's Nat David. It's uh, on display. I've got a uh, letter over there. It was signed by William Crawford in 1773 for a road. Uh, both the books that I was associated with that I did, the wind up book, has the letter in it from uh, uh, Hannah Crawford, the affidavit. And then the Upper Sandusky book has a section on Colonel Crawford. So if anybody's interested, I have a few over there. Uh, there's an antique shop that's open today on Main Street. She has uh, a lot of the books, she has a lot of stuff in there. And I did a diorama, a five by seven diorama of Colonel Crawford. Uh, she's got that up there, she's gonna sell it. Uh, if anybody's interested, it's the only one I've done and I'm not gonna do another one. So if anybody's interested in seeing it, you can go to the antique shop after everything's over. So uh, I don't know, John, do you wanna? Pardon? Any more questions? I know it's fast, but it's kind of the time is 
Now, Darrell, you said that the Wyandots were part of the Hurons who came down here in the 1600s. Were there Indians around here before that, like the Delawares and stuff? The only thing I've ever read was about the ancient, you know, the like the, uh, the I don't know, the, the pre, pre-Indian, uh, you know, uh, geez, I can't even think of the name. Paleo, Paleo, Paleo Indians. Uh, the Wyandots came down here because of the uh, faction because they heard that the British were going to go up there and, and destroy all the French forts and stuff. So they wanted to get out of the area. So they brought them down here to get away from, from that. And they stayed down here. And uh, the Wyandot was a French name. And that's, they say that's how the Wyandots got their name. But were the Delawares already here? No. Uh, the Delawares kind of came with them because most of the Delawares were, were in Pennsylvania. And that's why they called the Wyandots the grandfather tribe. Everything that happened in this area, the Indians went to the Wyandots to get permission. But they had several villages. The Delawares had several villages around here. And the Moravians came back here. Uh, they were, uh, Cap they, they call it Cappy's Town, right out in this area. They brought them back here uh, to keep them because they thought they were giving information to the Americans during that period. And that's how the contingent of the Moravians went back to Gennady Mountain to get their crops in because they weren't being fed by the Indians around here because they really didn't like them because they were Christian and they kind of shunned them. And so they went back to get their crops back and that's how the Moravian Massacre happened because Williamson's troops found them and 92 of them and two of them escaped and came back. That's how they got Captain Pike involved with that. Anybody else? Where was Colonel Crawford captured? Over by Leesville in Crawford County, it said that, uh, as a matter of fact, he, he was close to where the Bowl, Battle of Bowling Tandy was. If he'd have walked, they said just a few hours before that, he'd have walked right into the battle. And uh, one of the Delaware villages was close to that area, and they, that's how they got captured. They walked into a Delaware ambush. 